welcome, Internet, back to the wonderful podcast, Makers on Tap, which I totally just didn't forget the name of as we were starting this recording, because you know what? I haven't been here in a while, and it's been a little bit, and I've already started drinking. <laughs> so I'm going to have a good night tonight, because we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of 52 episodes being put out by Makers on Tap. Woo! Glass, glass, um, clink. Who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started with that because that was that was the big thing when we started off. And titles have changed. Um, so, uh, my name is Chris. Uh, I am no longer a officer of River City Labs, or at the time I was a director of River City Labs. Uh, I am only a member, um, and I assist in many ways still, um, as much as I can when I'm in the area. Um, and I love the maker spaces as much, if not more than, uh, we were that time a year ago. So it's, it's been awesome to still be involved in the maker space and still be a part of the maker space, but be involved in a different way. So that is my own self, gentlemen. And I'm Joe. I am, uh, at the time of the first episode, I was the president. I am no longer president or an officer. Um, I still run MakerFest, which is River City Labs' Maker Fairy thing. But, um, yeah, I uh, have spent the last year, six months not being an officer, and it's been pretty great to hang out and watch things from afar and drink beer and while the chaos ensues. But it's also been great to be able to just be able to help with the things that I want to help with so I can put all the energy where I want to put it, not where I have to put it. So Absolutely. I'm Aaron. Uh, I was vice president for two years. I am now the current president of the space and it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. It always is. It's yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just a little, no, more, nobody gets right? it until they're president. I yeah. didn't get it. That was it's completely sure. true. hundred percent. Part of me doesn't mind it, just because you know I love the love the space that much, and I'm happy to do what I can to help run it. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what what next year brings. No, that's absolutely. I've ex been uh, excited to hang out and help you be president. It's been great. Yeah, we've all been all been trying as much as we can to help steer you in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I have really dumb ideas. <laughs> Or sometimes, you know. sometimes you have the same dumb ideas that we had a long time ago, and we can tell you why they didn't work. Man, that's more true than I like to admit. <laughs> but, you know, like at the same time, it's always good to try those old dumb ideas again, because it's different the second time around. You know, may right. Maybe, maybe circumstances have changed enough that that idea might work this time, and we can try it with the knowledge of how and why it failed last time. And be able to nip things in the bud before they get bad. Or, you know, I never like to be the old guy that's like, that'll never work. We tried that 20 years ago and the robots crashed. I hate those guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> just driving into all of the all of the parts. Yeah, yeah. Every robot just just kills itself. <laughs> <laughs> Happens more than you think. So we've been doing this for a year. Yeah. I mean, this is beyond episode 52. Like, this came up in my timeline as, like, a year ago you did this. So... <laughs> right. Well, that was a... So, I think both of us shared, uh, like, our first official kind of postings. Yeah. Um, which was, like, mine was... I think mine was, like, episode two, maybe. Um, and, like, it was just, like, hey, we're doing this thing, like... And it was funny that, like, one of the first episodes we did was titled Failure. Um, and it was basically like, hey, we think this thing's going to fail. Like, we're pretty convinced that we're not going to follow through with this whole thing. We're just giving it a try because we want to. Yep. Um, but you know what? Let's get into that in just a minute. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's get into all that good stuff in a minute. First of all, we're going to talk about a couple cool things. Um, we got some news from uh, PrinterBot and Darkly and E3D. And we want to cover those things as well as some project updates. Um, but first, gentlemen, what are you drinking tonight? I have Laser Snake. 
Ooh. Ooh. When did you good? end up picking that up? It is good. Uh, Steve gave it to me out of his beer cooler Maker Fest night. Uh, and Janol kept trying to drink it, thinking it was just some beer. And I was like, no, look at that label. That beer is special. <laughs> it's going home with me. <laughs> And fair uh, enough, fair we enough. are not very far into this episode, and I am very far into this beer. So <laughs> nice. Might have to take a break. Same. Right <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I didn't bring two. I am drinking Yingling. Communist. <laughs> <laughs> it is all of our beer. <laughs> I mean. Comrade. Comrade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picked this up when we uh, drove uh, five hours both ways to pick up the saw stop this week Ooh. for the space. Where was that? It was in Ohio. Oh my god! All right, I, yeah, I thought it, it was, was in uh, it was in Middleton, Ohio. So it was five hours there, five hours back. Good, good. That that's a drive. <laughs> it was, and Josh is like the worst road trip partner. <laughs> Why? He just like he just dads it the entire way. Just like no bathroom breaks, no food. We're just getting there and getting back. Oh go man, through, we're going through Indy. We can go 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 to Kilroy's and get their awesome breadsticks, <laughs> and then we can hit White Castle on the way back. Bro, White Castle. He's like, that's gonna it's gonna take up more time. I'm like, yeah, but he's, it's already he, gonna take us forever to get back. He's never like that when I'm on a road trip with him. I mostly because I'm just real forceful because I'm much like, dude, I have a baby bladder. We're going to have to pee every 30 minutes. Just get used to it. <laughs> Sounds gotten, about right. I've gotten better. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I am back to Old Faithful. Um, got some new Glarus and loving it. Yeah. So I'm still going through my 12 pack from when I was up there for uh oh bristol that's what i was up there for um which was an awesome event um but yeah so i i'm really enjoying this one um all right so let's get into news topics uh aaron because you love them so much and this is really just an awesome thing why don't you get into the printer bot news sure so uh brooke drum of printer bot released a teaser video on youtube and i think to all of his patrons beforehand but he has partnered up with Bill Steele, who designed and made the original Infinite Z printer at Murph in 2017, I believe. So he partnered up with him to uh, tease a reboot of PrinterBot, um, and with, with the first printer being some sort of belted setup. So the teaser video was an extrusion-based stainless steel belt type uh, belt axis. It was really just the belt. And they were talking about their plans you know, for the future. And if you're interested to hear more and, or be the first to know about it, to sign up as a patron for Brooke, just about any tier will give you access to his project updates and him and Bill's updates on things. Yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. He's doing good stuff. And it's really, honestly, it's pretty affordable. Like all of his tiers are priced very well for what they are. Um, and he seems to be putting out updates pretty frequently on the whole project. So yeah. this is going to be something really kind of cool to watch as the belts are kind of taking over and becoming like really freaking cool now that they're getting developed for and properly coming out. So it's like, this is, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the belts are really going to change micro manufacturing. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you ever saw the, the Prusa laboratories walkthrough on YouTube, he just has a whole farm of I threes printing more I three parts. Imagine not needing to manually take parts off the bed. Yeah. And just have them dump into a bin. They're taking right. out gerbs. <laughs> <laughs> Part remover is now a job of the past. <laughs> That's a legit thing, though. Like uh, voodoo manufacturing, uh, uh, Shapeways, Lulzbot, Prusa. Like, they all have a team of people managing their printers and removing parts and starting the next prints in the in the queue. So, you know, automating that process is legitimately eliminating jobs. And, you know, for better or worse, those people probably will have far fewer cuts on their hands. Although flex plates are becoming a thing, and that's pretty great for print farm people, I'm betting. Oh, I've got to imagine. Yeah. 
Uh, Joe, you want to talk about non-planar slicing? Yes. Uh, so I can't say these guys' name, so I'm not going to try. Uh, but so some... fellow comrades. <laughs> uh, some guys released non-planar slicing uh, from the University of Hamburg, and non-planar slicing is super cool. And this isn't the first go around with it and it's not even the first go around in its in the form that this is, has been released so this is a uh slicer plugin slash custom build that analyzes your part builds the part in planar slices until it's able to reach all of the geometry that it needs to in non-planar and uh, it does that by having a nozzle definition entering in the length of the nozzle and the angles. And then it converts into non-planar slicing, which means instead of doing standard uh, slices like 2D, um, you have nice 3D topology that your nozzle will follow, um, which is super cool to watch. All right, th this project's neat, and this seems to be probably the most fleshed out I've seen. Uh, but there's been multiple projects. Uh, one in particular is from a guy named Mick Parker uh, called Bread, which is still out on GitHub. The last update I just checked was in 2017. Uh, but I actually sliced with that one and made some parts with it, and it was super cool. Um, I'm excited to try this. Like, I think I'm going to spin up a virtual machine and try it this week. So, because it does need to be built on Linux. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it, currently they've tested it with Ubuntu 1604 and 1804. So nice. You know, I bet I could build this on Windows Subsystem for Linux. You could, but why would you? Because <laughs> I already have it installed on my Windows machine, <laughs> and I could be installing it right now while we're running the show. Uh, that's why. Could you explain what non-planar printing is for those who have no idea what that is? Yes, so standard planar printing, um, each slice is made on a, on a 2D plane. So every slice is made in the X and Y, and we're building on Z. Non-planar slicing changes that in the sense that we're still building layers, but instead of those layers being flat, um, think of it, the easiest way to explain it is a dome. Uh, we would have the flat ones, we'd have circular layers building up, decreasing slightly which creates a very strong stair stepped effect in something like a dome non-planar slicing is much more aesthetically appealing because the uh, nozzle will traverse that dome and actually make the dome shape so the way they're doing this it would only be like the top three or four layers are non-planar to give that a aesthetic but it would build a planar scaffold to do the non-planar layers on. And that, I think that's the novel approach that this is taking. Because bread, the whole print was non-planar. So it was very dependent on nozzle geometry to be able to succeed. Bread's a very proper open source name. I know, right? I love it. Like that. it's just weird and doesn't describe it whatsoever. It's Sliced perfect. bread. <laughs> I mean, it oh. makes sense. No, it looks, it looks really freaking cool. Um... Just all of the kind of examples that they have, um, weirdly enough, made me immediately think of uh, pieces from Settlers of Catan um, and just like how the typography on those pieces look very, uh, well, they look realistic. They look like actual typography from a map. Yeah. And this one like took that normal layer lines that you're always expected to see on any one of your prints that kind of has weird geometry and just completely smoothed it out. And it was, it's incredible. Like it looks amazing. Um, I'd be interested to see how well it is replicated um, before I'm like, woo, but it looks awesome from the videos that we've seen so far. I, I think this would be particularly useful for people doing miniatures like Catan or like um, uh, Warhammer where yep. you have to paint it <laughs> because like, Smoothing out those layer lines and the models they're showing on the website, that would be hours of sanding, filling and sanding and filling and sanding. And then the, the non-planar slice would be you know, minimal work. 
to try to finish and paint. So if you're like, if you're looking at it and I, I do suggest like, Hey, go to our website, um, check out the links. They're going to be in there as well. Um, the the piece that they're showing off in the video looks like you might have to do like one or two sands on it. Like it doesn't look like you would have to fill it in with like any filler. Like it just looks like you might sand it over. And that's mainly to let the cat or the, the paint catch. Like it looks awesome. Yeah. Um, so it, I can't wait to actually see Joe's prints because I'm going to be gone this week. So um, I know he's going to post like his prints and, It'll be awesome to see like how this is actually coming out. Way to put me on the spot to actually follow through with it. Good job. Hell yeah, you know I'm gonna. <laughs> um, speaking of printers, because um, that's just gonna be mainly what we talk about. Joe, you want to talk about the tool changer as well? Yay! Uh, so E3D quietly released the project files for the motion system for the tool changer this week. So yay! The Woo! whole printer is officially open source. I'm pretty sure. I think they've released everything now. So that's awesome. If you wanted to build an official E3D tool changer, everything you need to do it is out there on GitHub now with the final uh, revisions of all the drawings. I'm excited. I heard recently that I will be getting upgraded to the full retail release on my beta machine. Nice. Sweet. Which is also exciting and makes me think, what can I do with all the beta parts? (laughs) <laughs> we can we can make the tool changer printer bot. <laughs> we could do the tool changer printer bot. We could do the tool changer Mazev. We could do all kinds of things. So it, so now that it's basically all the parts are now released, um, this is a shout out to all our E three D friends. We would love to have you back on and yeah. talk more about it. Yes, yeah, Greg. <laughs> That would be uh, would be a lot of fun to just kind of like hear the history of how everything came together and how where it is now. So we love to talk to you guys again. We know that at least some of you listen occasionally. <laughs> yeah, Greg. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All good. All right. Well, we have one last one, um, and this is kind of near and dear to our hearts. Um, Darkly Labs. Um, they are putting out some really cool stuff. Um, our friend Dominic over there is putting out weekly updates on some of the stuff that he is uh, working on. Yeah, they're called uh, Weekly Emblazer Short Projects, or WESP. Yes. And these things are freaking awesome. Uh, and they're ranging in just like everything for you to be able to do. Um, not only is he releasing the project files for you to be able to do stuff like this, um, just period, but he's also like, this is something you can do on other lasers as well. Yeah. But, um, these are just, Hey, these are amazing things that I've created. Um, why don't you think about creating these as well and getting involved in the laser game? And so he's got stuff like, uh, mass tile engravings, edge, uh, laser displays, um, some felt phone cases, really cool clock, polypropylene mask which looks freaking awesome yeah they're absolutely Um, beautiful and like he's continually putting all of this out so it's it's really going to be exciting he's um he's told us that he's going to be doing this for sounds like about a year um and just continually putting out weekly content so uh we heavily suggest going and checking out darklylabs.com slash blog for all of the information on all of these projects and to give some love out there to Dominic and all the great work that he's doing to encourage people to get into lasers. I don't know if you guys looked at it, but his project files, he's actually giving you the Lightburn project file for it. Yeah. So if you, if you use Lightburn, which I think you pretty much will use if you have an emblazer, but if you use Lightburn at all, it's already got all the settings and stuff configured. That's really neat. Which is going to be great because hopefully I will be getting my emblazer here within the next two weeks is what I'm hoping on. So I know I'm excited to finally get on the train and have one at home that hopefully will not kill my cats. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Just, just get them the laser goggles and they'll be fine. You know, they're, they're just going to love it. I know it. (laughs) 
But uh, yeah, so heavily like go check out his cool stuff. Um, we love him. We're gonna absolutely continually to have him on as much as he wants to come on. So um, but yeah, from there, let's get into the main topic, guys. Or project updates. Shoot, you're right. I wrote them down and I didn't even do it. What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with everything about me? Cool. This is why we don't let guests host. <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna leave. Just gonna just gonna go. All right. I wrote this down. It's in front of me. Literally, my display is project updates, printer bot, non planer slicing, darkly labs, and tool changer, and I still couldn't get it. Ah. Oh. All right. Who wants to go first? Well, I have a lot, so I can go last. I fair enough. Have a lot of projects that I could update you on, but I can't. So the only project that I can update on currently is um, I'm super stoked because I finally figured out my stringing issue on my tool changer with the Bowden extruders, which makes me not forced to convert everything to direct drive quite as fast. It will all end up being direct drive, but. If you have issues with your Bowden extruder stringing, just turn your retract speeds up as far as they'll go. Like, just put a, a ludicrously high number in there and see what happens. Because that's what I did, and then all my strings went away. <laughs> just crank that shit up. Yeah, for the longest time, uh, 4 millimeters at 40 millimeters per second was my formula for every Bowden extruder I ever touched, and it just worked. It didn't work on this machine and four and 100 didn't work, but four at 400 seems to work a treat. So, you know, I don't know if it's getting to 400. I don't care if my strings went away. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. It just yeets that filament out. Yeah. <laughs> I did start. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm quitting the podcast. Thanks to uh, our friends at project r3d i got an abandoned bc and sigma that i have been working on updating to r19 update and that updates about three quarters of the way done except for i have a bad stepper driver which happens to be the stepper driver that drives the left x-axis carriage which also happens to carry the z home switch um so I just can't use the printer at the moment because I can't home Z and the main X axis <laughs> extruder doesn't move. Um, but I'm on my way to getting that fixed and I'm very excited about it because I wanted to play with the BCN printers for a really long time. Overall, they're very beautifully built. They're all folded sheet metal and very well thought out. Um, but apparently their electronics are incredibly static sensitive. So. Don't throw them in a box full of random parts. That's what, what I learned. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, so if I'm, if you're going to go last, Aaron, so uh, right now, most of my projects have kind of gotten put on hold, but uh, two, and this will be the official start of one, um, and then I'm also basically starting another one and kind of a bigger thing with that. So I'm starting a cosplay build, um, which is going to be pretty intensive. Um, I'm going to be building a custom character from, uh, the new game that's coming out cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. Um, and I'm really excited for it. I have some really cool ideas that I'm going to be doing this to make it kind of my own, uh, make it very unique in some ways. Um, and I'm going to be pushing myself to learn a lot of different things with this. Um, I'm going to be pushing to learn uh, some NeoPixels uh, and do some really cool stuff with that. And then also some different programming stuff, um, as well as a little bit more intensive sewing styles uh, to be able to cool, pull off some really cool stuff with some EL wire. So really excited for that one. Um, and then that one kind of ties in a little bit to a new project that I'm starting in the area, um, which is a cosplay builders guild. Um, so uh, I got the idea with uh, a couple others that it would be really freaking cool to just have a place for a bunch of cosplay builders 
to come and hang out and exchange ideas. And I basically talked with them and was like, well, why the heck aren't we doing this at the makerspace already? It's got all the tools that we could possibly want, um, excluding a sewing machine, but we're going to work on that eventually. Now uh, we have a sewing machine. There's like two. Do we have? Do we have we a nice really? one. Yeah. Yeah. Cat donated. Oh, I thought that got left at Colts. Yeah, you know, Colts oh, no, sewing anyway. machines got left at Colts, but we got more. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So now we do have everything. Pretty much everything that we could possibly want. So that's amazing. Um, so that it, that's kind of the cool thing, though, is like everything will be offered under the sun for us to be able to do cool stuff there, um, as well as be able to host classes for uh, smaller builds and all that kind of stuff for people to be able to learn how to use materials and what stuff. Like one of the biggest or one of the bigger things that I would like to do down the road in a little bit is uh, do a gauntlet build um, that will involve – uh, 3D printing, laser engraving, and all this other kind of stuff to show like, hey, this is the potential of what you could do with all these tools um, and do all this kind of cool stuff. So uh, that will hope or that will be starting on the 16th. Yes, that is a Monday. Yep. So the 16th, I'll be actually hosting this class at our um, or this meetup at our local RCL uh, makerspace and just being bringing in a crap ton of people. Um, I have a wonderful co-host who is going to be working with me. Um, her name is Laura, uh, and she has done some really awesome builds with some cool stuff. So I'm really excited for her to be able to share uh, her knowledge and skills in the cosplay area um, to the community as well. So, um, yeah, but that's that's what we're really excited to do. Um, the other thing... Um, Funny enough, uh, my friend Laura, she was sending me a whole bunch of pics today from Wizard World. And man, seeing all of the uh, Star Wars characters really got me going again for, do I want to build an R2 unit? <laughs> and I contacted a few friends and basically it's begun. <laughs> Yeah, the answer to that is um, always yes. Yeah, it's it's going to be a fun build. Um, it's going to be stressful um, from everything that I've seen on it, all the reading that I've done up on it. This is a very hard build. Um, but that's what I want. I want something that's going to push me to learn new stuff. And uh, doing stuff with RC controllers and all the motors and all that stuff is completely new to me. I do not have a whole lot of experience with that. And so I want to push myself to learn a new area. Um, and so that's what this whole thing is going to be is me learning a new set of skills when it comes to all that stuff. So, um, we were actually talking before the show on what's going to be my new printer in order to print all these freaking parts, because a lot of it's going to be printed and big. Um, yeah. And they're big. So I, uh, I was basically talking with them. I was like, well, that's going to basically be the first brunt of it is what printer do I need to build next in order to do a lot of this stuff. So what are the legalities with building R2 now? I know there's been a lot of concern with copyright now that Disney owns um, yeah. Star Wars and is doing the Star Wars experience and selling full size built R2s for like 20 grand. Yep. Uh, so. All the reading up that I've done on it so far um, is you basically can't charge for your services. Um, it, there used to be a thing where the astromech techs um, would charge to be able to come out to like birthday parties and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, and so they would be able to profit off of having an R2. Um, essentially, you can't do that anymore. Can you um, charge to build parts still? I believe so, because on the astrotech forums there is parts for sale still so you can you can actually still buy and or sell uh either domes or printed parts or all that kind of stuff so i'm trying to offset a lot of that cost by building my own printer so i can print all my own parts but i will probably still have to buy either a steel or a fiberglass dome um and a few other parts because like boy i don't want to deal with making that kind of stuff <laughs> I don't know. I might have a, I might have a printer big enough to do a dome by the time you get around to that. That would just you, be a fun project. Do you do you think you would? 
Are you talking about the the uh, the massive like two? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah, we need to talk about this more offline. Anyway. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, so that's my next biggest project. Um, the The expected is to hopefully have it done in a year. Um, if I could, I would love to have it done by C2E2, but that is pushing it a little bit. Um, and so most likely it would be done by next year's Wizard World, and I would be able to take it up there and hang out. So um we will see not sure at all how this is gonna hang or how this is gonna pan out um but the process has started i've started to buy stuff and we'll see what happens <laughs> money has been spent so the project has started that's that's a good pretty much <laughs> but aaron all right let's hear what you got all right we haven't recorded in like what two weeks now yes and i've gotten a lot done in two weeks so I'm really excited for your your cosplay guild thing. So I'm working on a new project for that. Super secret. Okay. Not okay. Gonna tell you. Just just I'm just gonna I'm just throwing it out there so now there's accountability for me to finish. <laughs> I I'm gonna hold you to it. All right. Uh second, I made a brand new website for the makerspace. Um the current one is all based in WordPress and the guy that's running it is getting tired of dealing with WordPress. And it's also on a, a cloud server that we don't own. That was kind of given to us for free, and that might be disappearing at the end of the year. So I want to take that time and kind of redo it, because we don't really need all of the WordPress features for just an informational site. So it's all rewritten in Hugo, which is a static HTML website generator. So now it's all one HTML page, one index HTML that you know you load when you go to the website, and everything's right there. There's no database, no backend. Uh, makes it very hack-resistant because there's no database layer to it and no backend. Um, it looks really slick. I'm really excited about it, and I should have that up and running. I mean, it, it's up and running, but I'm going to have the DNS stuff figured out uh, by this weekend. Also, I got a new wiki set up. Let's see, last year I got us a new wiki set up, um, but that's, that's on a self-hosted server using wiki.js. It's nice, but I, fi- I recently found Gitbook, which is a really nice cloud-managed um, cloud hosted wiki for open source projects or businesses or nonprofits. And for, if you're a nonprofit, they actually give you their enterprise version for free. So I had one of our officers go, reach out for that, got that set up. Then I spent most of yesterday getting all of the existing content migrated to the new thing. Now it looks awesome. And it's like a, a really nice web app. And our members will easily be able to log in and just quickly edit things. And that's basically what I was going for. I mean, Free for the space, nothing for anybody to manage, no technical expertise required. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. So that's the second thing. Uh, third thing, making really good progress on the PrinterBot Simple Pro build. Um, I finally have just about all the hardware I need now in-house to, to finish it. I actually just started assembling it tonight. I'm working on the Y assembly, so the two linear rails that go up and down. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I, I watched a really long YouTube video on lubricating linear guides and carriages. And the guy spent, I, I think his entire job is deals with lubricating carriages. Because <laughs> he, he went deep. I'll, I'll link in the show notes because I found it really interesting. But he went, he went way over overkill with the lubricating. <laughs> I, th- I think that's it. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, saw stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, not really my project per se, but something I was organizing for the space was after after a member you know got her on our table saw about a month ago now. We've talked about getting a saw stop in the past, and we never really got much traction, or nobody kind of took ownership of it. So I decided to do that, and we were able to mostly crowdfund just from from member donations enough money to buy a new saw stop. Well, a used saw stop new to us. Now we were going to buy new, but then our friend Devin sent us a marketplace ad or Doctor Bandsaw. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Bansaw uh, <laughs> sent us a link to a Facebook Marketplace ad for a professional, uh, like the professional level uh, saw stop over in uh, Ohio for only like 2900 bucks. So, I mean, with it had all, it already had all the features we were going to buy and then some. 
but then at a much cheaper price yeah. than we would have paid with like tax and all that stuff. So uh, a couple of us drove up on Tuesday, like I said, five hours there, five hours back, and we got the new saw stop now at the space. And that was quite an ordeal to get that there and back. That's yeah. it for me. No, that was that was like heavily appreciated. Like that was pretty freaking awesome that we were able to find something that quick and at a pretty freaking good price. Like we were that thing came with upgrades that we weren't even considering and we still got it for less than what we were originally gonna be paying. So that was awesome. Yeah, we essentially saved about six hundred dollars from what we were originally going to spend and then got a little bit more. Yeah. And it was new in January. Oh, That's wow. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So it's a new saw. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. Like no time on it. It has like, you know, less than five hours of use. Nice. Jeez. That's awesome. All right. All right. So 40 minutes now. in. What are we really going to talk about this episode? <laughs> we want to we wanna do a, so, a year in review. Yeah. Kind of. I think like, we should do a year in review and then what we see going forward. How do we see the show going? Yeah. Okay. I think that'd be neat. All right. All right. So what have you guys, what have you guys really enjoyed in the past year that we've been able to do? And we can't all say Maker Fest. <laughs> no. Um, I think the the funnest part for me has been being able to consistently contribute to the community in a way that I didn't think was going to be meaningful and turned out to be meaningful to people. Dude, holy crap. We got mentioned on a forum for like, hey, if you want some better definition, you should actually talk to or you should listen to this podcast that these guys did with the. Um, it was on Twitter. The, yeah, it was on Twitter. It was for Elite Machine Works. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was trying to remember. We got mentioned for that. Like. I don't know that person. Yeah. I don't know if you guys do or not. Um, but like, that was freaking awesome. We're, we're actually becoming a part of the community to be able to say like, Hey, like you should listen to these guys. Like they did an interview and they helped explain it a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. We had people come from Fargo, North Dakota to our tiny maker fest to hang out with us because of this podcast. Hi, Brandon. Like that's it. Wow. <laughs> and Mandy. And Mandy, yeah. No, they like uh, that's been a whole nother thing. I've just been like, oh, uh, like so freaking cool to have people who are just this passionate about the community to be able to like come and hang out with us. Yeah. Like I can I can't say like how awesome that is. I've just always wanted to be able to contribute in a meaningful way. And I kept trying with a blog and the blog kept falling on its face. And I talked about that in the first episode and that blog still has the lore Ipsum talking about skateboarding. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it has never been meaningful. And this has our drunken ramblings have turned into something meaningful for people. And that means a lot to me. I yeah. I mean, to, to piggyback off that, I, I think mine would honestly be, um, would be rep rep. Rep rep was just such a freaking amazing experience to be able to like corral all the people around and just like drink beer with them, drink just happy stories with them. Yeah. Like everybody just was having this amazing time. We were all having tacos. Like, it was such an incredible experience to be able to like sit up at the front of the hall of this packed, like this year, like they filled out two of the freaking buildings to the point of where like next year we're going to have to get a different building. Yeah. And so like, we're sitting up at the front, just like talking to everybody. And we just want to like, just tell us what you're building and tell us what you're building. And just having this amazing community experience with everybody and just like getting to know so many people through that. Like I didn't know who TH3D was before that. And I, I didn't know who, um, oh, uh, now I'm feeling like a jerk that I'm forgetting who they are. Who else was at, uh, Project R3D? Yeah. Joe. Um, yeah. I didn't know who they were like before Rep Rap. And like then they're coming over to MakerFest and they're like, Hey, what's up? And like we're like hanging out and just like talking through the event. And it like just making friends like that and being able to talk with the community to be able to be like, 
this is something we're obviously all passionate about. Let's all freaking be friends already. And like, that's, it was, an, it was incredible. It was amazing to just be able to build that community even more. Um, and I, I've, I've treasured to have even a small part in this to be able to be a part of that. And, like that's, and you're not going to come to earth. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be something. Everything's got a little jab, Chris. Everything's got a little jab. Uh, I I don't blame you for why you're not coming. I don't. I really don't. Yeah. It's it, like I would uh, to to everybody. I don't think I'm going to be able to come out to Earth. Um work is getting insane right now. Obviously, I've been gone pretty frequently. Um and there's a pretty good chance that I could get put on a pretty big project indefinitely. Um and that could definitely steal away some time even more. So, um, unfortunately, as much as I want to come and hang out with everybody at Murph, I know some of the people, um, who are going to be there and would love to see me. Um, unfortunately you're not going to be able to see this beautiful face. So, (laughs) um, I am definitely still planning on coming to future events as much as I can. Um, so that way I can see everybody and be able to say, thank you for listening so much. Um, but unfortunately I don't think I'm going to be able to come to that one. So, they will razz me about it. <laughs> I will say there will be a Chris standee in our booth that you can come take pictures with. So we'll make that happen. Can it just be a Black Hawk helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> just bring it full circle. <laughs> I forgot the biggest project update. Oh, is is oh. Is, is, is is my real Chris project? <laughs> that's right. That's right. It, it's, it's my Chris soundboard for when he's gone. It's just going to be a baby. <laughs> Are you Duke Nukem? <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of, yeah, for sure. Or uh, about that. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> <laughs> like you. Fuck, just all my isms. Everything that I just like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This week a I'm lot drinking of a hard cider. It's delicious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> Dude. It's you, man. It's you. I can't argue with, is. with with the truth. If I could drink Zombie Killer every week, it would be Zombie Killer every week. <laughs> oh, man. So I have sourced a soundboard that I can use for it. That's my last product update. You're just going to have a medi pad in front of you just like ready yeah. to go? <laughs> yeah. The secret is the buttons on it are loud. So I'm thinking <laughs> of using capacitive touch buttons so they're silent. There you go. And then somehow get it right into my audio interface. <laughs> yeah. So everybody can hear it in real time. You could just have it on your phone and just hold it up to your mic and be like, pachow, pachow. <laughs> I like cider. Like you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that one in there. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Oof will be a good one. <laughs> Oh, oh man, God. Aaron, <laughs> how how about you? What 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 is this last year? It's really been something. <laughs> uh, I definitely did not expect us to fall through. But I feel like we all have felt that way, especially for a year. Right. Yeah, I, it's it's been a challenge. Um, it's been hard at times, but you know we keep doing it, and that that means something. Yeah, like it might it might be a chore to keep finding a time over the weekend that we're all available to record or those few times where it takes us three times to record the same episode. And we talk about the same thing three times. Yup. You know, we've only had a couple of those. So even through all that, we still do it. Well, and we still enjoy it for the most part. At least yeah. I, I think I do. Yeah. No, I still manage to find the time to edit it every week and I still enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I mean, listening from that first episode, it, for me, it was just crazy to think of how much we've improved the quality of the show from just our um, back and forth, um, from our recording environments, our mic presence, or whatever you call it. Yeah. We've all improved in different ways. Right. And it's just, that that's just very neat to me. No, it's, it's, it's been awesome. We've, we've definitely grown. We've definitely thrown as much love into this project as we definitely can. And it's, I, I believe it's shown Yeah, like we, we went out of our way to make sure that this is the best thing that we could offer. Um, and because of that, we have grown to have this amazing community around us. 
I, so that's, I can't believe we don't hate each other. <laughs> I, I, mean, well, <laughs> I mean, debatable. <laughs> I, uh, okay. I guess your feelings are different than mine, but <laughs> no, this is, it's, it's been awesome. Like it's, I, I never, as, as much, it, it's kind of funny. Um, when I was listening to the, to the first episode, um, and kind of going through that, it was like, yeah, we still, we still kind of do like very much only get to talk either, uh, on Slack or at the space. And it, it's kind of sad. Cause like, I do hold you guys as probably some of my best friends, um, just period. Yeah. like. Yeah. I I don't get to hang out with too many other people um and you guys are are very close to me. It was kind of nice like it, me and Joe got to go out and take a walk today and just kind of talk and throw frisbees for a dog. Like that was that was awesome. Like I I still love you guys. You guys are awesome. Um and I've loved doing this show with you guys. Yeah. Well, you're welcome back anytime. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> hey man. You're being gone is my version control. Man. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, gosh. It's, it's my hate I, for I Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Joe's Gerbil. <sighs> yeah, it, it's funny because every time we commit to doing an event, like especially when we commit financially to doing an event, months ahead of time, I'm always like, is the show still going to be a thing when that event happens? <laughs> I remember, like, when we were getting ready for RepRap, which RepRap was only, like, what, like, five months in, five or six months in to when we were, uh, um, that's when, when we, we had started. Because we had to sponsor in yeah. September. We, we honestly were like, maybe we could do this and this will be it. Yeah. Like, this, <laughs> this, this will be the last one. And, like, we, and, like, RepRap just completely revitalized us to be able to keep going and just be like, no, we want to keep making it. It's fucking awesome. But, like, yes. Um, that like I remember that like we were very much thinking like do we want to keep going do we want to keep doing this and it was just like afterwards it was like fuck yes like this is still something that's special to each one of us in our own ways and this is something that still we love well actually that brings up one of my favorite things about the show is getting to have people on and giving them the opportunity to share their projects on a public field because like I feel like there's this whole community of incredible makers that are underserved for publicity and being able to get their projects out there. Like we've got the famous YouTubers that do whatever and they're cool, but there's the people that are heads down creating often don't get recognized because they're not putting themselves out there to be recognized. And, yeah. um, you know, when we go to those events, uh, I think all of us kind of go out of our way to go find the people that are doing weird, unique stuff and go talk to them. Um, like uh, Jason Prasnus that did the the weaved 3D printed baskets. Like, yeah, his stuff is incredible. I have never seen him on another YouTube interview or podcast or um, Brian Sarah. The guy who I interviewed at uh, Milwaukee Maker Fair last year that was doing the really awesome ceramic printing. He's been doing incredible stuff all year. And he does a good job of putting it out on Facebook, but I've never seen him mentioned anywhere else. So yeah. um, it's it's been really fun to be able to go meet these super passionate individuals and be able to share what they're doing with our audience and try to get them some recognition as well. That's what kind of pushes me every time we go to an event, being able to see their energy and how enthused they are to get recognized by something like us, even though we're still small. Um, you know, it's something. And I really enjoy being able to do that for them. Absolutely. So what do you think? Another year? <sighs> Man. I'm in. I don't have anything better to do. <laughs> I will, I will be on as much as I can and enjoy every minute of it. Um, but yeah, like this is, this has been an amazing thing to, to continually build and just to continue to watch it just take form in its own way. Yeah. Like just keep going. So we've recorded almost every week. A lot of shows will record like a few episodes and have a bank 
to rely on. And we had that for a little while with the interviews for IMTS. But once we had those, we've recorded every week. And I think that's the only thing that I think we might change going forward is have a few banked up episodes so that we can have lives. You know, really, we're in the minority. Yeah. Like, from what I've seen, most podcasts have like 10 episodes ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like they'll, rec- they'll record. Oh, yeah, this will be probably published in a month or two. Yeah. And we're like, nah, three days, four <laughs> days, it'll be out. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Depends on what we recorded it this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it, um, and, and, and for the most part, I think that's been useful for us because we've been able to uh, get people on right before the hype hits for their project, uh, like with the Patheo episodes or uh, with the Emblazer core. Um, you know, I think this last year having to record every weekend and making sure that we're available, it's been hard on all of us. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially me and you, me when I was editing and you and you've been editing like it's it's been hard. Um, and that might make it easier for you to be on more, Chris, is to just have a few episodes in the can. So you might see some format changes coming up over the next year, just a little bit, but nothing huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, that's the only thing I would change is just, we should just plan better and have, have more respect for our own social lives and personal lives. Because what we've been doing is great, but I don't think it's sustainable for another year or two. And I'd like to see this go on for a long time. Yeah, I have a lot of things no, to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 gonna be awesome, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Yeah, we need more episodes on source control. <laughs> I don't think we've I don't think we've really covered everything we could on it. I don't think we've had enough programming related talk on the show no i agree i i think we need more software related guests i i'd still Mis- really love Mr. to machinist have... inviting all the machinists on look you know what i've been having a blast inviting all of my friends onto the show and all these people that i meet that are doing incredible things you guys just got to do the same <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm going to have apparently a whole guild now of people that I can invite on who are going to be my niche. So he's got binders full of cosplayers. <laughs> binders of cosplay. <laughs> Cos binders. Um, yeah, I would, I would love to do more things with that. Maybe have like special episodes with like cosplayers and like those get released on a, a semi-regular basis. And we have like, s- like special guest uh, categories that get released on a semi-regular basis. So, you know, like every other week there's going to be a new type of guest and it's not just 3d printing and, and CNC dudes. Well, and that's, I think we've talked about this for a lot in the background of like, we want to make it all makers. Yeah. We want to include all types of different kind of community um, people who are just, who are making cool shit. Like it's it, we want to include everybody. Um, and so we've talked about artists and cosplayers and, um, just it, all, all kinds of cool people. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's something that I would love to see over the next year is we implement more of that. And part of that is, is me stepping up to, to the plate to do that. Um, and being able to actually go out there and get interviews when I'm at all these conventions. Yeah. Um, and I think that absolutely, that will happen now that we've kind of established like, Hey, we're a serious thing. Um, and we would love to be able to talk to you. We have, um, we have made it past episode eight. And right? <laughs> <laughs> this is not something I made a website for in two days. Yeah. And then, like I'm applying for a press badge. Um, but like, I think that absolutely will, will hopefully be able to engage more, um, more makers of more things and have more people kind of, Get to talk about things they're passionate about. Yeah. That's another thing I'd like to see us do more of is more events. Um, so Earth was super, f- or Murph was super fun. IMTS was super fun. We're debating on a couple maker fairs coming up this year that I'm looking forward to. 
you know, it, if there's events that we should be at and you think we should be at them, even if we don't have a booth, but if we can just like come walk around and talk to people, let us know. And um, if you're making cool stuff and you want to be on the show, let us know. Uh, especially if you're not a business, but if you are a business, obviously we're cool with that. Where would they let us know at? Makers on Our Tap website. on Twitter. Our website, makersontap.com. Where else, Aaron? Uh, I'm at, at Aaron Makes, if you want to tweet at me directly. But yeah, it's uh, makersontap.com slash contact or makersontap at gmail.com. Or makersontap on Instagram or makersontap on Facebook. That's what, not as reliable, trust me. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You have I, to be letting the government know as well. Well... I mean, if you, you that's another issue. We've I've been talking about all of this on my smartphone, so or next to my smartphone. So now, like, since we brought up people who contact us on Twitter and want to make cool stuff, um, I am absolutely going to give a shout out to Luis Diggers at at Luby underscore three D, um, who is in the works with us to make a three D printed freaking tap handle yeah um that i'm really freaking excited about yeah so that's awesome and we will absolutely be sharing some of that when more of that comes out so yeah that's freaking awesome <laughs> louise is such a wonderful person i'm so excited that she remembered that we talked about this <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because i forgot <laughs> Very cool. Well, gentlemen, anything else that you guys want to talk about? Tons, but we're at an hour and but we're probably pushing where people want to listen to us ramble. So have you heard about our Lord and Savior source control? <sighs> I'm gonna make a soundboard for you and it's gonna be one button. Oh <laughs> uh, man, I forgot to I forgot to tweet my, my penguin meme that I made when I was at the zoo. I'm going to describe it, though. There was a Gen 2 penguin, which I found out that day is a species <laughs> of penguin, standing up on a rock with his arms outstretched and a whole flock of penguins staring up to him with a spotlight on him. And he was totally preaching the word of source control in Linux. <laughs> and it was just the most beautiful sight. And I got a great picture. So <laughs> I will share that on all the things, all the makers on tap things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, it has been an honor and I cannot wait to continue to do this with you guys as we continue down this maddening hole of maker and maker culture. <laughs> with that, keep making stuff. This is the end of the podcast.